Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. Please, please get the scriptures, not a Bible, but the scriptures. And please follow me along word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so, okay? Follow me along, okay? Because sometimes the mouth gets going a little bit quicker than the brain. Sometimes I skip a groove. Follow me along, okay? Check me out. Get the scriptures. We have uh, other resources that we are going to be addressing today, but we need to start this out with the scriptures to warn you of the reality of the situation of today, that the Vatican is running things, okay? The Vatican is in control. The Vatican has subverted and has destroyed America from within. And you need to be reminded of this. And for those of you who want to turn a blind eye, you need to wake up to the reality of the situation. Okay? So, we're going to go through some familiar passages of scriptures, and then we're going to get into some other resources, which probably, I'm just guessing, a majority of you do not have. What are those? First, we're going to Take a look at some of the stuff that is in this book by Afro Manhattan, The Dollar and the Vatican. The Dollar and the Vatican. Afro Manhattan. I highly recommend his work if you can get your hands on it that are under $500. This one was the, probably the only one that is cheap that um, I was able to get. I'm not paying $600 for a book unless it is the authorized version of the scriptures. And if you're going to pay that much for an authorized version of the scriptures, uh, it'll probably be a Cambridge or something like that. And that thing you can take to you with, uh, to the grave. It'll outlast you if you take good care of it. Ain't that right, brother? Okay. Um, if you can get a hold of Afro Manhattan's work, I suggest you do. Some of his stuff, it's not, you know, it's not perfect. But he does a lot to um, expose the Jesuits and Roman Catholicism. And the other book I'm going to recommend is this. The Love, Love Letter to America by uh, the stage name Thomas Schumann. But who is that? Really? Yuri Bezmenov. The video of Subversion, which is on this channel, which will be in the description box, this is the written form, basically, of that video. We're going to read a little out of this, okay? Just a little. But before we get to that, please turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures. We are going to begin with one verse in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12. Follow me along. We've got a flow. We've got a flow that we are going to be um, following, uh, Okay. Uh, not 12, Brad. Where, where are you? Where are you? One second. <laughs> Excuse me. Ephesians 6.12. Ephesians 6.12. Follow me along because we have a flow that we are going to do this in. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. But if our gospel, our gospel, the gospel of the church and living God, the gospel of Christ, the gospel of salvation for today, that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he shed his blood on the cross, okay? And that you, in order for him to save you, have to go unto him according to his standard, not your own. Okay, way too many people like to boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. They are thieves and robbers, okay? You have to go to him on his terms. Broken of your self-righteousness, uh, 
manning up, taking accountability and responsibility because you put him on the cross and having the hell scared out of you, fearing the Lord, and you call upon his name and may he save you. Okay? That's the gospel that we preach today. All right? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the little g, God of this world, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And how has he blinded the minds? Because remember, what did he say in the garden? That ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? Knowing good and evil. Meaning that if you disobey God, you'll be able to judge for yourself what is good and evil. And we can't do that because our judgment is flawed. What else did he say? That if you disobey God and do what he said not to do, your eyes will be what? Open. Okay? Having eyes, but you see not. See? That's why it says blinding the minds. Oh, people have eyes to see. But do they see? Hmm? Okay? Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Like I said, we got a flow here. Galatians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. And that because of false brethren brought in, uh, brought in, okay. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they, the Roman Catholic Church, might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Yes, yes, and of course, Jude 4, because Jude does not have chapters. Jude verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares, infiltrating Jesuit coadjutors and or Jesuit themselves. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, thank you, Lord, open right to it. Verses 18 on to verse 20. Little children, it is the last time. This last time, we are in the, this, this last time, meaning before the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? Which could happen at any given moment, Okay? Everything is there. Everything is there. Okay? We get caught up, redeemed. Okay? That man of sin, the son of perdition, be revealed. Okay? The Jews will be able to have that temple built in no time flat because it's going to be backed by the Vatican and that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? The technology for the mark of the beast is already out there. Okay? It's all there. It's all there. Okay? It's all there. Be aware of that. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that, Antichrist, to replace and is against Antichrist, to replace it with Satan's Christ, that man of sin, the son of perdition, who doesn't judge, who isn't angry, who loves you unconditionally, and loves those who reject him. Okay? Yeah, nonsense. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, yes there is, whereby we know that it is the last time. And they're popping out of the woodwork. <laughs> I mean, look at all the Christians here on YouTube. And look at all these imbeciles like this, uh, Jonathan and Juliana, which I may be doing a video on today, I don't know. Um, wicked devils who have seen the Lord. You've seen nothing. I'm not going to get sidetracked on that. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For it, 
For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. That is the perfect scriptural definition of what the falling away is, which we are in. And it's been going on for centuries, literally. Literally centuries. Okay, it's what, been a little over 2,000 years since our Lord Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, right? Right? Okay, so this has been happening for centuries, but it's increasing more and more. And remember, people, saved people do not fall away. Saved people fall but we do not fall away, okay? Those who say that they are of us, they are the ones that are falling away. That's what the falling away is. Do not be deceived by anyone else trying to tell you otherwise, okay? And verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. What is that unction of the Holy One? What is that unction of the Holy One? Oh, well, let's see. Let's see, uh, 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Seal, sealed until the day of redemption. That uh, permanent seal, the Lord living within you, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, that seal until the day of redemption, which makes you, number one, a new creature, and also seals you until the day of redemption, once saved, always saved. Eternal security, okay? And now, since we have read that about Antichrist, Proverbs 7. You, my brethren and sisters, you are very well aware of this. But see, like I said in the previous video, uh, unfortunately to those who surf YouTube or whatever, you are only <laughs> relevant as your la latest video. Okay? Unfortunately. Those of you of the Church of the Living God, those of you who wish to learn and stuff like that, I mean, there's this, there's, you know... Quite a bit here that the Lord has given your servant to do, okay? But most people aren't like that. Remember, brethren, we are the few. We are the few, okay? While Christianity, Christians are many, but we, the Church of the Living God, we're not even in, in the comparison. In comparison. Proverbs chapter 7. Verses 10 on to verse 23. This is describing Rome. This is describing the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, which is Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon. Okay? And behold, there met him a woman, of uh, uh, Proverbs 7, verses 10 on to verse 23. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. The attire of an harlot. Okay? She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abideth not in her house. Now is she without. Now in the streets. And lieth in wait at every corner. Yes! Yes! Well, we as the church of the living God are to be out there witnessing unto the lost by a uh, lost by uh, having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. The harlot, Rome, and all her daughters. All the denominations, all these religions are out there as well. And they are loud and stubborn. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. We are outnumbered. We are outnumbered. Okay. And how does the whore operate? How does the whore operate? So she caught him and kissed him. And with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vow. See, the way of the cross, which you and I as the Church of the Living God preach and demonstrate daily unto the lost, but also when it's just the four walls, the ceiling, and the floor. Okay? That's very important too. All right? But see, you have to be broken before you can be fixed. You need to have the hell scared out of you, okay? You need to know that you're not a good person, that you can't save yourself, 
okay? It's called repentance, okay? And that hurts. That hurts. This is the sword of the Spirit. And you need to be cut with the sword of the Spirit, okay? You need to have your heart pricked, okay? Okay? And the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, the authorized version of the Scriptures, does that, okay? The truth must first be a suffering before it ever becomes a glory, okay? You got to remember that. But see, Satan, through the Bibles, through his church, Roman Catholicism, the Vatican, comes up to you. God loves you. God's not angry with you. God wants you to come as you are. Yes. And and some of these denominations of the whore, uh, you know, repentance is a work. Prayer is a work. Repentance is just going from unbelief to belief and all that nonsense. Okay. So she caught him and kissed him. And with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. They offer to you that which is false, that gratifies the flesh, when the faith that was once delivered unto the saints kills this. Okay? Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. It's all about you. It says, you, you know, that you don't have to, you know, you, maybe you shouldn't be doing the things of the world, but don't worry, just believe and everything will be just fine. Or come on to us and we will show you all these works that you got to be doing to right with, be right with God. Like eat him or drink his blood or that nonsense. Yeah. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. Remember, for us, for our instruction in righteousness today, Egypt is a type of the world, okay? So to get in bed with the whore who is a part of the world, and look at how, look at how beautiful my bed is. Come, be with me, lie with me. Lie with the whore. Who, who covers who what? I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt, you know how Paul talks about in First Thessalonians about um, being beware of fornication, which is talking about physical, yes, but also spiritual. Okay, you're messing around with uh, these religions and whatever this nonsense is, you're committing spiritual fornication. You're lying with the whore, and she uses the world. Why do you think sin looks so beautiful? Why, why do you think that what Satan offers you in a moment of time, in time through the media and through all this stuff, why it looks so beautiful? Because it gratifies to your flesh. It's flesh-oriented as this is. You see how that works, son? Daughter, huh? Okay, let's continue. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Oh, doesn't sin look good, smell good, huh? Yeah, yeah. Come. Let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with love. The good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. Where, where's your Lord? Where's this Jesus you're talking about? He ain't coming back for a long time. Uh, well, he will come back at his second coming. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And with the redemption of the purchased possession, our salvation draweth nigh, which I believe can happen in any moment. Okay? Once the redemption of the purchased possession happens, you know, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, gets redeemed. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then that wicked shall be revealed, that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? See, there's the following way happening right now, which has been happening for centuries and is intensifying every single solitary day. We get redeemed, caught up, and then that man of sin gets revealed. Once we get redeemed, you got seven years. Let's say, oh Lord, oh Jesus, how long, how long? Let's say that today, the Lord's like, okay, that's enough. Come up hither, we get caught up, okay? It'll be seven years and then he'll come back, okay? Seven years and he'll come back, all right? What are you doing messing around with the whore of Babylon? 
What are you doing, huh? What are you doing playing games, putting yourself in the bed with the whore of uh, Babylon, dear friend? And she's lulled you to sleep. Satan's church. Satan has lulled you to sleep, made you fat and happy, and you've suckled the breast of the Vatican, haven't you? Oh, be aware, dear friend. Be aware. Verse 19 again, for the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. He had taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. Yes, he will. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Forced him. Hmm. How did she force him? By throwing herself at him. Okay. Not a literal force, but it says here that she forced him. Appealing to, number one, this young man was going places where he shouldn't have gone, okay? And because he was going to places where he should not have been going, he had no understanding, which is departing from evil. So, number one, this young man who was void, where does it say that? Um, uh, uh, verse 7, uh, verse 6 and 7, For at the window of my house I looked through my casement, and I beheld among the simple ones... I discern among the youths a young man void of understanding, and understanding is departing from evil. So if this man wasn't departing from evil, that made him susceptible already to be lulled by her sweet words, by the beautiful covering of her whorish bed, and the perfumes, and all the incense and stuff like that. He was, it was a walking death wish. It was a trap. And he, which had no understanding, which is departing from evil, fell right into it. All these Christians who say they're Christians, but there's no understanding, no departing from evil. They are of the world. They want the things of the world. They want to be comforted by Satan. They want to be entertained. Yes. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? That's what it is. Oh, people have many needs. One of them, the greatest of them, is entertainment. Ah, yes, you want to be entertained, don't you? And Satan, in a pedophagging manner, flashes to you the world in a moment of time. And you're made high, sometimes literally. But you're made high by what Satan offers you and your mind is altered. Who's doing that? Satan. Through what? His church. Roman Catholicism. The Vatican. Which is the Jesuit order. More on that in a second. Let's continue. Verse 22. He goeth after her straight, straight way as an ox goeth to the slaughter or as a fool who says in his heart there is no God to the correction of the stocks till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Let's read the rest of it while we're here. Okay? Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths, for she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. And you know what that, that, that reminds me of James. What it says in James, okay, strong men. I let the man, eh? Yeah, strong men. Strong men. Yeah, yeah. James chapter 4, <laughs> verses 5, on to verse 10. Do ye, plural, think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth envy? Hmm? Well, if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, okay, God who dwells within you, he's a jealous God. 
He made you. He doesn't want you messing around. He doesn't want that love, that relationship that he wants from you. He doesn't want you giving it on to Satan and all his horrorish devices. Okay? A lot of people seem to have trouble with God as a jealous God. And they confuse envy with jealousy. Okay? The things that are different are not the same. Okay? But they confuse jealousy with envy and stuff like that. God made you. He wants to have a relationship with you personally. Yes, he does. And he gets downright irate and angry when you, whoever you are, is giving what is rightly due him as your creator onto that what Satan offers you. Okay? And see, in that aspect alone as well, your belief is irrelevant. Brad. In that aspect alone, you lost people who have chosen your, to worship yourself, i.e. Satan, your father, over what the Lord has done for you and what he is and what he offers himself. Yeah. Yeah, he's jealous of that. He doesn't want you giving what he rightly deserves onto the devil, and so many are. Okay? Okay. Verse 6, but he giveth more grace, where he, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, you see that? Don't look at me. Look at the scriptures. Come on. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. You can't resist the devil unless you submit yourself to God. How many of these fools who say in their heart there is no God think they're strong men and seeking to resist the devil on their own accord and the devil the whole way, the whole time it's like, who are you? Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? Okay, you, you belong to me anyway. And you're trying to, th who you think you are? It's like you see these people, like for example, these ghost hunter guys that you see here on YouTube who will uh, will sometimes talk about the Lord and talk about things of scripture and will want to actually read from the scriptures, not a Bible. And it's like, okay, okay, you got someone who's lost trying to use the scriptures to speak to a devil whom they are the same spirit anyway. The, the, the ghost hunter guy and the the ghost that's haunting the house. It's like, <laughs> wow, okay, okay. It's the pot calling the kettle black kind of thing, okay? Yeah. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. And verse 9, you know, well, hey, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. So let, therefore, let us enjoy pleasure. And what does Solomon say about that? Therefore, behold, this is vanity and vexation of spirit. Hold your place here. Let's look at that. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Okay. Verses. Uh, verse 1 and 2. I said in mine heart, Go to now, I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. I said of laughter, it is mad, and of mirth, what doeth it? Hmm. But yet, see, Solomon. Oh, that was uh, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2 in Ecclesiastes chapter 2. But see, Solomon all the while was acquainting his heart with wisdom. He knew better. But yet he still indulged in those very things. And the laughter of the fool come to naught. Back in James chapter 4, verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Now, I'm going to be reading to you some parts from this very good book, uh, The Dollar and the Vatican by Avro Manhattan. Of course, that's not the individual's real name, but that, that's neither here nor there. Put the scriptures over there. Now, 
I'm going to be reading to you some portions from this. I'm going to show you some of the things we're going to be reading, okay? And uh, if you can get your hands on this book, I, I do strongly recommend that you do get this book, okay? Now, uh, let me, i got to find it. Okay, got to find it. Got to find it. All right. Going to read to you first. Nowadays, I, I'm going to read to you this, this highlighted section, okay? If you can see that, pause, just the highlighted stuff. Pause it and read it. Okay? Today, there are three main political ideologies. Capitalism, which is supposed to be the political thing here in America, supposed to be. Then you have socialism, socialists, communism, and stuff like that. Okay? Communism, uh, which is attributed on to the Jewish Karl Marx, but is actually the creation of the Jesuit order. Okay? Through the Reductiones in Paraguay. Uh, the book uh, Utopia. Okay? Uh, I forget who did that, but I think that was written by a Jesuit. Okay? But there is also a third imperialism, imperialism, i.e. Catholic imperialism. Imper imperialism is what? Is what? Having a dictator. And isn't it interesting, isn't it interesting that in the kingdom of heaven, <laughs> they're going to be a dictator. And it's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And that's something. Dear friend, my fellow Americans, do you realize, do you realize that America, that the Constitution, is a Masonic document? You know, even, even Avro Manhattan himself in this very book acknowledges that our Constitution is a Masonic document. Yes, yes, and in the kingdom of heaven, there's only going to be one king, and the world and we who are saved go up with him, and those who get right with him during the time of Jacob's trouble and endure to the end, okay, there's going to be a king, one king ruling all the earth. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Quote, Catholic imperialism is not a myth. It's like, but the Catholic Church doesn't run everything. It's the Masons who are controlled by the Jesuit order. Okay, yes, there was a time when the Masons and the Jesuits conflicted, but you got to remember the Jesuits are infiltrators. They run. Um, um, Freemasons, the Me Freemasons are controlled by the Vatican. Okay? Not the other way around. And see, the Vatican will tell you that to draw attention away from herself. Okay? But, Catholic imperialism is not a myth. It is as ruthless a reality as the capitalist and socialist perils. The ultimate goal of Catholic imperialism is the total Catholicization of the human race. As Napoleon Bombard has said, the Jesuits' whole goal is to bring the whole world under the subjection of the Vatican to be ruled by the volition of a single man. Today, that is Arturo Sosa, the Black Pope. But eventually, coming soon to a theater near you, will be that man of sin, the son of perdition, who, hey, greater! is not Emmanuel Marcon, okay? You twit. Okay, make sure you sell your coffee mugs and your stuff, you charlatan. But, again, the ultimate goal of Catholic, Catholic imperialism is the total Catholicization of the human race. Total Catholicization, Catholicization implies total elimination of whatever and whoever is not Catholic. Yes. 
Yes, and the religion during the time of Jacob's trouble, the predominant one is going to be extreme, pre-Vatican II Catholicism. You know, kind of like in the Dark Ages when Rome ruled. Yeah, it's coming again. Okay. Its goal, therefore, is to be feared as should anything threatening the liberties of modern man. The fact that Catholic imperialism has not at its disposal the immense economic and military power of its lay rivals does not make it less dangerous. For it possesses what neither of them has, a living, vigorous, aggressive church. That man of sin, the son of perdition, you read about this in uh, Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. He goes forth conquering and to conquer, having a crown on his, on his head, and he has a bow but no arrows. What does that mean? He's going to use others to do his dirty work. So the arrows that he has are going to be others, not the ones that he brings himself. See? Okay? All right? All right. Here's a... Uh, uh, here are, we're just going to be reading the highlighted parts here. Pause that and read it. Can you see that? Pause that and read it. Okay. Quote, Catholic imperialism, imperialism is the core ordained, core ordained religious and political extension of the Catholic Church's will to dominate in fields not pertaining to her. Hmm. And, quote, it is evident that Vatican diplomatic activities would not be taken very seriously were it not for the widespread influence exercised by 400 million Catholics. There are so many, there are a lot of Christians out there, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah, there are. Yeah, there are. Now, now, all right. Here, I got to I don't have an overhead camera. That would be way too technical. Okay, but here, I'm. We are going. I'm going to read you these pages in their entirety. Okay, right here. Okay, let me get that. If you can, pause it and read it. You know, take a snapshot and then the snapshot. Zoom in if you can. If it's uh, clear. And, and read it for yourself, okay? And also, I'm going to be reading on this page to where my finger is, okay? On this page, right here, to where my finger is. If you can, pause that and read it. All right? So many people out there, you know, the, the, the Vatican, they're just religion. Oh, no. You see this? See this? This is temporal and uh, spiritual and what is it? Spiritual and temporal. Okay, the two keys. You know that wicked peace sign that people uh, flash around? That comes from the Vatican. What are you talking about, Brad? Spiritual and temporal. You know, you see the Roman Catholic Jesus pictures with Jesus doing this. What does that mean? Spiritual. And temporal. The Roman Catholic Church believes it's her gold given rights to not only control where you're going to go when you die, but also to control the governments and stuff like that. Okay? Okay? That's what that means. Spiritual and temporal. That the Catholic Church uh, can keep you out of heaven and also has the right to tell you what to do with your life. The only one who does that has that right is Jesus Christ, not Satan. Okay? But we're going to read now. All right? And see, so many people who are in this pedophagine, drunken stupor because they are given over to the enemy on the altar. And hey, look at us Americans. Okay? You give us our Dunkin' Donuts and our coffee, and we become null and void. Like Sun Tzu says, okay, you know, the best way to defeat an enemy is not going out in open battle. No, you defeat them. You put in the midst of the people a dirty bomb and it blows up, okay? 
You make a populace lazy and controlled and subverted. Okay, subverted, which uh, Yuri Bezmenov, and the link will be for that in the description box, okay, which Yuri Bezmenov talks about. Blind the people. Make them stone with the images that Satan gives. Get their attention diverted from what it needs to be on. And they can destroy and rule a country without a shot being fired. It would be better if, you know, you can have your enemy man to man. At least you would know that the greater would win. But see, subversion. Okay, psychological operations. You know, read the art of war sometime, which I'm overdue for a read through again myself. Okay, but read the art of war. Okay, all warfare is based on deception. And what better way than to lull a people into sleep, to make them ill effective? And when the enemy, which is already in this nation, is called upon to act. How many of us poor Americans, yeah, are going to say, what hit us? They were here all along. Take your head from out betwixt your buttocks, dear friend. That church that's in your town with the big phallus on it, Rome, they control everything. They are allowed to control everything by the Lord for judgment upon this world. And until we get taken up, it's part of my duty to remind you of that. Okay? So, the Catholic Church, on the other hand, by cultivating diplomatic relations with states controlling either an important Catholic minority or a whole Catholic population, is enabled to take advantage of more abundant opportunities of ensuring that Catholic interests are represented and furthered than would otherwise occur. And this is talked about also in the Sacrita Monita, which will be in the description box, okay? Also, check out the entire read-through of the Sacrita Monita with other resources done by Brother Alexander Hartley. Both, that one by Brother Alexander Hartley will be in a playlist. Uh, both will be in the description box for you. Uh, see, part of the Jesuits is the Hegelian principle, okay? Where they control both sides of the narrative to control the outcome. So they want both sides, which they are manipulating, to come to them. Where are people going to for peace? Where do people go? They use the Roman Catholic Church to act as a mediator, okay? And the religious people of the world all go to Rome. They ain't going to the head rabbi in Jerusalem, okay? Rome. They're going to Rome. Rome, as the peacekeeper, is in accordance with what the Jesuits tell them to say in the, uh, in the Secreta Monita, okay? The characteristics which distinguish the Vatican from any other diplomatic political power can be summarized as follows. Yes, remember, spiritual and temporal, okay? Rome is a political power, okay? And it uses religion to di dictate its political agenda, okay? And that religion is going to be signified in one, that man of sin, the son of perdition, who's going to be looking like that one, you know, the Roman Catholic Jesus in the visage, okay? Why do you think they're brainwashing you with this Jesus who has feministic features in his face? Okay? Number one. The Vatican has a clearly defined goal. Yes, it does. To bring the whole world into to subjection unto itself, to be ruled by the volition of a single man, quoting Napoleon Bonaparte. Notwithstanding the flexibility of its policy, it will never for one instant waver. This goal is the furtherance of Catholic influence and her shaping of the world at large according to Catholic tenets. Okay? Two, 
by claiming to be the center of Christian teaching on the rights and duties of individuals in society and of nations in the, in the comity of nations. The center of Christian teaching. To this very day. What's Christian? Well, that has to do with Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. But what, is, what other than that? What do you think of of Christian? Well, Catholic. Catholic. And see, they say Christian, uh, well, Jesus Christ. Which uh, Jesus? That's a good, when you ask someone that and they say, well, Jesus Christ. Which Jesus? They look, what do you mean? Which Jesus? Where, where do you hear about Jesus? Who tells you who Jesus is? Oh, that, you know, the Pope guy. That's how, when you ask people, because you might have, right? When you think of Christian, what do you think of? Well, Jesus. Which Jesus? What do you mean? Well, who tells you who Jesus is? Catholicism? They go to the Pope? They will always, not always, most of the time, do what? Catholic. Or the Joel Osteens and stuff, which is just a daughter of the whore. Working for the Vatican anyway, you see? Uh, that That's how you continue that if you ask someone uh, we've done this quite a few times okay what do you think of christian well uh, you know the pope the, the pope or the catholic church or or jesus which jesus there are many jesuses which one see that's how that's how you go about that brother okay let's continue also by the indisputable fact that the Catholic Church holds members in every corner of the earth, the Vatican is a worldwide institution. Yes! Its agents are already planted here in America. At the behest of Rome, uh, of uh, Arturo Sosa, go to action. Just like that. Late is the hour, dear friend. Number three. Although its diplomatic machinery may resemble that of any foreign office or State Department, the resemblance is mainly superficial, for the Vatican has at its disposal what no other foreign office, with the exception perhaps of the Russian, the, you know, the, the Vikings, the Rus, can boast of, an organization through which, through which to exercise pressure upon any given country or upon many countries simultaneously independent of the will of their governments. Infiltrators. And Yuri Bezmenov talks about that, about the, the KJB and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of, and you got to remember, some of this is dated. And you might say, well, the Soviet system has fallen. Yeah, but you think you're, you're smoking crack cocaine. And I'm being polite when I say that. You're smoking crack cocaine if you think the KJB system has been uh, dissolved, okay? A lot of the time, if you ever read uh, this, and I, you can pick this up, A Love, Le Love Letter to America uh, by Yuri Bezmenov, okay? Uh, a lot of the times when you see him talking about the USSR or the KJB, it's like, well, that's... Because what? Communism comes from the Vatican, from the Reductiones, okay? Utopia, which was, I believe, written by a Jesuit. Communism, the father of communism, the mother of communism is the Vatican, the Jesuit order, okay? Affixed to Engels and Marx to make the Jewish people look bad, okay? You got to remember that, brethren. All right, number four. The Vatican has access to a large volume of diplomatic information. The priest, the woman, and the confessional. You read The Secret History of the Jesuits by uh, Edmund Paris. Had to remember which uh, author wrote that. Okay, how the Vatican, the Jesuits, used the confessional. To gain information okay because Catholics today you go to the confessional which had its beginning 
in Babylon. You read about that in Alexander Hislop's The Two Vatican's. Okay, oh, the two Vatican's. <laughs> the two Babylons. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, confession was not a brainchild of the Vatican itself. It stems because the Vatican Roman Catholicism is the perfection of the religion that began in Babylon, structured in Egypt, and is perfected in Rome. Okay? But the Vatican, through the confessional, gets its information. Okay? That's why when infiltrators who want to infiltrate here, they come in and wanting all kinds of information from you. That's a warning sign for you, brother, sister. I ran into that from these coadjutors who are asking all kinds of personal things and trying to get information out of you. Okay? Now, between brethren, between friends, uh, yes, you know, you share things. But you got to be, be careful with whom you share information with. Okay? Because the Vatican seeks that to use it against you. Okay? When someone comes along willy-nilly and asking you to divulge deep information, uh, that ought to be a red flag. Okay? But let's continue. Owing it to its official status, as well as to an immense amount of information, which although not always the fastest, is provided by a global news service operated by the Catholic hierarchy in all corners of the earth, the latter being one of, one of if not the most accurate and up-to-date diplomatic, political, social, and economic news services in the world. Did you hear that? Here, here, number four, just as where my fingers are. Pause that and read that and look at that yourself. You see that? What does that mean? The news, dear friend. There are other sources. J Jeffrey Kreider has... He's a charlatan. He's a charlatan. Okay, some of his stuff is... Okay. There's another person who, uh, I'm not even going to say his name, who also seeks to bring out factual news, a little devil novice, who also may do good articles and stuff like that. But never mind. The point is, the news that you are receiving is coming to you from the Vatican. The news networks. You know, Google here is controlled by the Vatican, the Jesuit order. The Jesuits run Google. The Jesuits run social media. Okay? That's not really. Do you realize that everything you're doing online is being tracked, stored by, with uh, information by the Vatican? And all the computers that they got and stuff like that. Brother Alberto Rivera testifies to that. All your information is being tracked by the Vatican. They use the confessional. They use online. Okay. Uh, you know, there are those out there who want to believe that you can be have total privacy and secrecy online. That That's a lie. That's There's no such thing. You want to have, be secret and have privacy? The best way is to take your hell little health phone and smash it. That's the only way you're going to get true privacy, eyes diverted away uh, from the Vatican where they're not going to see anything that you do. That's the only true way. You can try your Tor Onion browser or whatever. You can do DuckDuckGo or whatever, Firefox which those DuckDuckGo, Firefox, and Tor browser is a lot safer than Google, than Chrome, yes, but nonetheless, they are owned and operated by the Jesuit order. And the Tor browser thing, they say it's funded by the pop, by the public. Um, the Jesuits are in that. When is security governed by scrutiny. 
Your life is controlled and operated through the media. There's no place to hide. The only way to hide from that is to turn it off and destroy it. Let's continue. No other power or religion can be compared with the Vatican in this respect. Even Buddhism, whose members outnumber Catholics, or Islam, whose adherents, generally speaking, surpass the average Catholic in devotion. <laughs> yeah. Like in order to get the third uh, temple up, they're going to have to get rid of the Mosque of Omar, and then these Muslims are going to go bat poop crazy. And when you got those MMA guys like that Khabib guy, uh, or that devil scoundrel Andrew Tate, you ever heard of that guy, Andrew Tate? No? Good. Keep it that way. The bald-headed guy who boasts his tattoos and was involved in what they call human trafficking, apparently, but calls himself a man of God. He's a, he's a Muslim. Yeah. Yeah. Scary stuff. Have nothing like the enormous political influence of the Vatican nor any organization comparable with that of the Catholic Church, nor a spiritual ruler like the Pope. <laughs> Take fence in the gates. Nor the power to exert such influence in the two leading continents, Europe and America, whose nations either are Catholic or have large Catholic minorities. That might be a, a play on words, you might thinking might be thinking, right? Large Catholic minorities. But in the book of Daniel, that man of sin, the son of perdition, will come to power with a small people. Remember that? Come to power with a small people? Oh, the Jesuits? The large Catholic minorities? The sleeper cells, as they are called, that are already planted here in America and in your nation. The efe efficiency of this new service is due to the higher hierarchical working of the vast machinery of the Catholic Church, which has transformed all its officials, namely uh, hundreds of thousands of priests, bishops, archbishops and members of religious orders into its spiritual and political agents, newsmen, infer informers, representative, propagandists at one and the same time. Uh, right here it says, which, was which has transformed all its officials. Transform? You know where we're going, brother. If you do, put it in the comment section. Someone will. If not you. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Yeah, verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel! For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Now see, as we're looking at in this book by Avro Manhattan, okay, Right away, ministers of righteousness, you think of the religious uh, spectrum, like the Joel Osteens and the pious Jesuits with the dog collars. When it's deeper than that, your politicians like Trump, who's, you know, make, a great, make America great again, okay? Your doctors who know you, know your body better than you do, okay? It's deeper than just religion. Remember, it's spiritual and temporal. continue. 
It is no exaggeration to say that the Secretariat of State of the Vatican has, in every devout Catholic, access to a potential news source. A source of news, yes. Because the Catholic is first loyal to the Vatican. Okay? There is no such thing as a Catholic who is, patri who is patriotic to the nation that they are in. The Catholics here, this is verifiable uh, according to their teachings. When you get involved in the horn Vatican of the Vatican and become baptized and whatnot or whatever, confirmation, you are officially a citizen of Rome. You have a dual citizenship, spiritual and temporal. You see how that works? The Catholics in America, they're dual citizens. They are first a citizen to Rome. And then here, okay? Or whatever nation you are in. And if Sosa says for the Catholics in that nation, you do it my way, not, not God's way or the way of the scriptures, but you do it my way, they're going to obey. Okay? More than in the description box, but let's continue. And in every intelligent priest, a trained informer, like in the confessional. Okay? One of the main tasks of a priest is to keep his finger on the pulse of his people, not only in religious, but also in social, political, and even economic matters. Again, people, the spiritual and temporal. Wake up. Wake up. This enables him to acquire an inside knowledge of the real conditions of his village or parish, unmatched by, unmatched by that of any local authority. Whatever is judged useful is imparted to the local hierarchy, whence it is passed, whence it is passed to the bishop, who, in turn, takes it to the Vatican. I have come across Jesuit coadjutors, people working for the Vatican. And before I knew that they were working for the Vatican, I mean, I shared things of a personal nature. Therefore, the Vatican has personal information on me. Not all of it, praise the Lord, but uh, they do. And see, that's the goal of the coadjutor who comes in smoothly, speaking like a dragon and looking to love bomb you. careful, brethren. Be careful, people. Okay? Let's continue. When to this is added the sundry information collected by the numerous semi-religious institutions operating in Christian and non-Christian countries, through Catholic laymen who are organized into societies, the Jesuits, or political parties in close touch with an with and often under the direction of priests, as well as the information gathered through the usual diplomatic channels. It then becomes evident that the Secretariat of State of the Vatican is one of, if not the best informed news agencies in the world. The Vatican. best informed news agencies in the world. Let, let that roll around in your head. Let that roll around in your head a little bit, son. Daughter. Number five. The Vatican can safely be considered the most ancient and most experienced State Department in existence. Yes, because Roman Catholicism is the perfection of Babylon and Egypt. Okay? Everything that Rome is doing has its beginnings in Babylon, um, crafted in Egypt, perfected in the Vatican. Okay? No other institution hath dealt with so many races, 
nations, kingdoms, empires, and rulers throughout the length of almost 20 centuries and the width of five continents. This claim is unique and should always be borne in mind by every modern nation when dealing with the Vatican. Because remember, in the book of Job, the Lord asked Satan, from whence comest thou? From walking to and fro in the earth and going up and down in it. Number six. The Vatican can afford to be very generous with the time factor. Think about that. Patient. Because Satan knows eventually. Satan himself does not know when the redemption of the purchased possession is going to happen. He doesn't. But see, he's patient because he knows that for about roughly seven years, he's going to set up his kingdom based upon the Roman Catholic Church. He knows that he's going to have at least seven years down here to rule things without the body of Christ being in the way. Think about that. Think about that. The Vatican, let's read that again. The Vatican can afford to be very generous with the time factor. That is, it can afford to wait. This is something which ephemeral governments, either democratic or totalitarian, can seldom do. For the Vatican, being utterly independent of elections, coup d'etat, Revolutions or sudden changes has a systematic stability unequaled in the modern world, and this accounts for a great deal of its diplomatic strength. Her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Okay? She changes on the outward thing, but it's smoke and mirrors, just like Vatican II is. But at the center of the Vatican, She is who she is. The Church of Satan wants to rule the world. The Church of Satan. The Vatican is, dear friend, the Vatican is. Roman Catholicism is. Isaiah chapter 14. The Vatican is this. Okay? Rome is this. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pits. That's what Rome is. Because it's Satan's church. And that little harmless little church building with all its grandeur and glory and the lights and the glamour and the glitz. Spiritual and temporal political. Wake up, dear friend. Seven. Last but not least, the Vatican becomes even more important during war. Yeah. Yeah. And during periods immediately preceding and following war. Again, which is talked about in the Secreta Monita. Okay, that when peace is the when peace talks come between nations, the Jesuits want to make sure that they are there to negotiate things so it benefits them. It's the Hegelian principle or Hegelian dialect. Control the argument, the counter argument, so that you can control the outcome. Okay. Last but not least, the Vatican becomes even more important during war and during periods immediately preceding and following war. This is mainly owing to the fact that 
very often it becomes an intermediary between belligerents. And like I said, uh, listen to the audio book of the Secreta Monita and also that of Brother Alexander Hartley. The playlist for that will be in the description box, okay? When diplomatic relations between warring nations have ceased, Transactions of various natures, which otherwise would be very difficult, if not impossible, can still be made via Rome. And how do they do that also today? Through the United Nations! These may range from the exchange of prisoners to negotiations for ending hostilities or for surrender. The Dollar in the Vatican by Avril Manhattan. Not one of his best works, but like I said, trying to get a hold of one of his greatest works um, uh, costs a lot more money, and that type of money you only spend on the scriptures. Okay? And remember, you got to remember too about this, brethren, people. The Vatican in World War II tried to bring about what? The League of Nations. That didn't work out. But after World War II, they have what? The United Nations. And after World War II, what happened in Israel? 1948, Israel became a nation, okay? And you got to remember, all of that was financed by what? The Federal Reserve. The Jesuit Bank that is here in America. The Federal Reserve, which is an independent bank here in America, okay? The Federal Reserve, which is Sosa's bank, the Jesuit's bank. The Vatican's bank, okay? And that's the significance of the Titanic. Because the Titanic, like we talked about in other videos, was purposely sunk by the Jesuit order. Okay? It was. Whether or not there was an iceberg, when the Jesuits heard, oh, there's an iceberg. Oh, good. Oh, good. So we don't have to sink it ourselves by saying a boiler explode. That ship was going to go down because the opponents to the Federal Reserve were on that. And once they went down, all opposition to the Federal Reserve Bank was taken out of the way. And there we have the Federal Reserve. Okay. But now I'm going to read to you a little from Thomas Schumann, otherwise Alexander Alexandrov and Alexandrov Alexandrovich Bezmenov. Okay, love letter to America, where he talks about subversion. Okay, now uh, let me see. Going to be reading here a little bit. Uh, to, okay, we're going to be reading, I'm going to be reading to you where my fingers are right there, okay, right there, going to be reading to you this page in its entirety, okay, can you see that, okay, pause it and read it, then going to be reading this page, these pages, Pause it and read it if you can read it. And then also up to here where my finger is on these pages. Notice mass education. What do you think that the Vatican is doing to you while you sit mindless in front of a television and have no moderation? What do you think he's doing? Now, let's begin. Now you gotta remember too, this was written long a while ago, what, over 20, maybe even 30 years ago? And a lot of what he says in this book is about the KJB, okay? When the Soviet Union was in open power. But like I said, you think like the KJB is out of service? No, it's just been altered. No, like the Catholics in action, the CIA, which Avro Manhattan talks about in his book, okay? All the subverter, be it Andropov's KJB or any other purposeful group or an organization hell-bent on the idea of a new world order, the Jesuits, okay, must do is to study the areas where your nation's ideas could be eroded and substituted, and then slowly but conscientiously consistently effect those areas by sending 
infiltrating agents like the Jesuits to influence, to inject new ideas, disseminate propagandist literature, and encourage self-destructive tendencies. Look at America! Look at the prop, uh, the uh, promotion of promoting transgenderism, sodomy, gluttony, and all this nonsense. Okay, feminism. Okay, look at it. Look at the media. Look at advertisements. Look at it. Okay, exactly that. And this was written many years ago. But he's right. He's essentially talking about the Jesuits. And remember, communism was created by the Vatican. Don't forget that. Let's continue. All a subverter must do to remove the spiritual backbone of America is to help you to politicize spiritual and temporal, commercialize and entertainment and entertainmentalize. Entertainment. You go to a church building, are you not entertained? You look at Joel Osteen with their stand-up and singing and all that nonsense, are you not entertained? The dominant religions. There are many other contributing factors the subverter can also take advantage of, such as the development and spreading of various religious cults. Morons and jehos. Okay? including satanic and death cults, preaching moral relativity and removing religion, and prayer, and, and prayer, any prayer, from schools, creating personality cults, like a lot of, like, uh, you know, these uh, people who are bombastic in their charisma and stuff like that, hence the it, okay? The it, okay? In religion whereby the preacher becomes the center and object of divine worship. I'm not going to make mention any names, but yeah. yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Savages. Bloodthirsty carnal savages they are. Not God. Often your religious charlatans claim to be incarnations of God or even God himself, like the Branch Davidians did. Uh, like the Pope. I have selected the above three main methods because I am most familiar with them. These methods were used by myself and my KJB Novesti colleagues, also the Jesuits. And these methods have proven to be sufficient, sufficiently efficient. We did not have to bother with such silliness, for example, as recruiting Billy Graham and forcing him to tell outrageous lies about the existence of religious freedom in the Soviet Union and state-run churches in Moscow. Yeah, that's because Billy Graham was a 33rd degree Freemason and worked for the Vatican anyway. He came out good at first, yes, using the authorized version of the scriptures, yes, to put on the facade. But then what happened over time? He went down to the toilet and showed you all for who he was really working for. That's how they work. That's how they operate. Okay? Yeah, he said we didn't have to go to uh, Billy Graham because Billy Graham was already in league with the Vatican anyway. Let's start with the most innocent method of destroying religion, namely making it entertaining. Oh, come on, you people that go to church buildings. They start you out with the music and the what? The clap. Let's stand up. Clap in the hands. And then they put you in the trance. Right? And then they want your money and then you get a 20-minute feel-good sermon to make you feel good that doesn't offend you. And then they may ask for more money and then they put you out the door. And then when you're there, it's what? A gossip column. Are you not an ads entertainment man? Are you not entertained? I have yet to meet one of these Christians. When you talk to them about scriptural things, you mention to a Christian about rightly dividing the word of truth, being dispensational, they look like look at you like you wave your purple fart at them. 
It's like, what are you talking about? That's heresy. I've never heard that. No wonder. No wonder. <laughs> Spiritual and temporal, buddy. No wonder. Are you not entertained? To attract people. And money, money, money. To establish religious organizations, some churches have literally become theaters. Oh, theaters conducting variety shows featuring celebrities from the entertainment industry who perform for fees. What's that guy? Um, I can't even think of his name. Kanye West. These celebrities who, you know, who are supposedly Christian. What's that one filthy woman? Not, uh, not Cyrus, but the other one. Um, oh, I can't remember her name. I can't remember her name. It was probably a good thing. But anyways, you know, I, I've seen here on YouTube uh, skits where people in church buildings are doing things like the Star Trek in a church building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is why you don't go to a church building, people. <laughs> you don't go to a church building. Okay. The KJB agents, Jesuits, of influence may or may not have to physically manipulate these entertainment arrangements. The indiscriminate choice of the celebrities for these such performances is usually quite pleasing to the KJB or Jesuits. Yeah. Keep them lulled. Keep them asleep. Lull them over with the fog of entertainment. Give them their Dunkin' Donuts and their coffee. Yeah. And I like Dunkin' Donuts coffee too, by the way. A group of rock or pop musicians with a message of social justice Sugar-coated and popular, popular spiritual tones can be more helpful to the KJB Jesuits <laughs> than someone standing in the pulpit preaching Marxist-Leninist Leninist doctrine. Oh, yeah, yeah, CCM, okay? Because uh, using uh, modern music and they say the... Um, you know that disgusting song, Spirit in the Sky, I Got a Friend Called Jesus, or the uh, Three Dog Night, um, Joy to the World, or the other one, um, Jesus is Just All Right by Me, okay? See? See? Satan, with his music, talking to you about a Jesus? See, in this, he talks about the KJB. The, you know, the Russian equivalent of the CIA, Catholics in Action. And remember, communism was created by the Jesuits, the Vatican. Okay, let's continue. The sugar-sweet messages of social equality from the crooning mouse, C-R-O-O-N-I-N-G, mouse of the entertainers, are quite enough to accomplish the aims of the KJB or Jesuits, without any overt activity on their part. Good book. Number two, commercialization. Right away, I think of Mr. Jeffrey Grider. I do. I do. Commercialization of religion does the same thing. If the church must solicit your money, and remind you repeatedly in every TV show to contribute with telephone numbers to pledge donations. <laughs> that only means that only means and infers that there is something basically wrong with your faith. <laughs> Faithful people do not have to be asked for money. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Again, amen, hallelujah. The tithe to their churches voluntarily, they tithe to their churches voluntarily and eagerly. Unhealthy 
competition for donations between various electronic churches does two things beneficial to the subverter. He has in parentheses KJB, I say the Vatican, the Jesuits. One, it makes religion dependent on the most successful salesman of God. <laughs> And these salesmen may not necessarily be the high, of the highest moral standards, you think? Nor must they be. Look at Jack Hiles. Look at Peter Ruckman. Look at some of his older stuff. How he's like getting the crowd going. Look at what the, that, 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 uh, what's his name? That Gene Kim and that video where he's there, he's swinging his thing and that, you know? Come on, people. Thus, truly moral, God-centered people are turned off by organized religion. <laughs> amen, amen, hallelujah. And two, it empties regular churches where you practice your religion by personal physical presence and participation and involvement. Well, he is talking about, like, uh, what his name, um, Morris, talked about, about, you know, people who were actual serious and getting along, uh, getting along because they are of the same faith in a meeting house. Not the building itself, but meeting together as the church, the body of Christ, okay? All a subverter must do now is to keep the further discrediting. All the subverter must do now is to keep on further discrediting the main body of the church by harping at religion in general as just another means of the capitalistic exploitation of masses and a profit-oriented opiate of the people. That's that's there right there. That's there right there. And the Soviet propaganda and its fronts and its fronts such as Novesti and the Soviet propaganda, the Jesuit propaganda. Okay. This and the Soviet propaganda and its fronts, such as Novesti Press Agency, does exactly that, and quite successfully through thousands of liberal and leftist media establishments in the USA. Google, Amazon, whatever. Politicizing religion is the most efficient method of demoralizing a targeted nation. Yes, once again, the spiritual and temporal people. Okay. Once a nation starts giving to Caesar... What belongs to God? Caesar, to Rome. Oh, Yuri, why didn't you just say it? Why didn't you just say it? And getting God involved in such things as social justice and partisan political squabbles, it predictably, predictably loses what religion calls mercy and the grace of God. Oh, Yuri Bezmanov, you might as well have just been talking about, you are talking about, Rome right there. But then again, if he would have outright came out about Rome, he would have been dead a lot quicker. I don't even know if this guy's alive. To put it in atheistic terms, a target country allows the subverter to use the area of moral values for dissemination and enforcement of amoral ideas and policies, like allowing transvestites or transgender people, guys who are dressed up as women, to go into women bathrooms to promote pedophilia as Disney does. To make it okay with you, sodomite marriage. Love is love. Do you get it, people? This comes from the Vatican to destroy and at the same time, they offer the solution. It's the Hegelian principle. Argument, counter-argument, to go to Rome to get the outcome. You see? 
The most powerful instrument of this process is an organization called <laughs> World Council of Churches. Bravo, Mr. Yuri Bezmanov. You might, you might, whatever. That, that, that's, that's, yeah, the World Council of Churches. 50 guesses who runs that. And the first 49 don't count, dear friend. I'm a conspiracy factualist. Infiltrated by the KJB, Jesuits. He says KJB right there, but it's the Jesuit order that wins things. See, one thing here that Yuri does in this, he doesn't mention the Jesuits. So if also the bad thing about all this, even though this information is really good, this is, he's not mentioning the Jesuit order. That's the bad part. He's mentioning the KJB. Yes, he is. But it's at the rule of the Vatican. Okay? That's the thing you got to put into this when you read this. Okay? Infiltrated by the Jesuits, KJB, it says KJB there, to such an extent that it is hard to distinguish these days a priest from a spy. Being a public relations officer for Novosto Novosti, I accompanied many foreign members of the World Council of Churches, WCCC, during their visit to the USSR. Some of them struck me as individual individuals pathologically unable to say or hear truth. Blah, no kidding. They were simply allergic to any facts or opinions which would undermine their spiritual affiliation with the Soviet manipulators, the Jesuit manipulators, Mr. Yuri. Archbishop and President Macar Macarios of Cyprus was one such religious visitor. Skillfully combining both God's and Caesar's things, Spiritual and temporal. Uh, good. Uh, yeah, Yuri. If you're still alive, bravo. Marcerius was extremely effective in bringing the desperately needed, needed air of legitimacy and holiness to the junta of the Soviet mass murderers and oppressors of religion. Again, Jesuits. His... Path, his photogenic presence at various international forums in Moscow greatly promoted acceptability of the Soviet influence in the non-aligned and developing countries. And you got to remember, uh, uh, President Harris and Smoking Joe, they were basically promoting a form of social, uh, socialism, communism. Pretty much. Pretty much. They really were. And the Republicans are no better with their flawed, broken capitalism. And like I said, uh, during the kingdom of heaven, do, uh, come on, brother, church of the living God, come on. My American countrymen. Is it going to be a democracy during the kingdom of heaven? Come on. Come on. Is it going to be a democracy during the kingdom of heaven? King James, I believe Christian, huh? If you say that it's going to be a democracy during the kingdom of heaven, I wonder who you work for. I wonder who you work for. Skillfully combining both God's and Caesar's things, Macarius was exceed... Ex, uh, did I already read this to you? Yes, I did. Okay. When after my defection to the West, I find protex... 
T-R-O-T-S-K-Y-I-T-E, Publications in a United Church of Canada, or C, Nicaraguan Catholic Church Fathers with Soviet-made, there he says it, Kalas, Kalashnikov machine guns hung over their church robes, or read about humanitarian aid from the American Council of Churches given to African mass murderers and terrorists who were trained in my old country by the KJB. I do not suspect, I know, these things to be what they are, direct results of the communist subversion of religion. I do not need any evidence of links between the KJB, I say Jesuits, and the church. So he, he doesn't put, he, he mentions, he, 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 he had to have known. He had to have known. But if he would have come out and in place of KJB put the Jesuits there, this would have been one of the most powerful attacks against uh, Mystery of Babylon there have ever been since uh, um, some of what Avril Manhattan did. Really would have. The complete confusion of God-related and political subverted related goals is obvious. In the extreme left column of my chart, which results of demoralization in each individual area on each level of subversion, the result of the demoralization of religion is a phen phenomenon referred to as the death wish. This expression is borrowed from a book by a Soviet dissent writer Igor Shafarevich, entitled Socialism as a Historical Phenomenon. YMCA Press, Paris, 1977. Dr. Shafarevich, in analyzing the dead civilizations of Egypt, which is alive today in Rome, Maya Mohanjadera, Babylon, etc., comes to an ominous conclusion. The, Maya, the Mayan Indians, Mayan, descendant of Ham. Look at that, what he says right here. I'm going to hold that up to you so you can see that, okay? Where is that? Where is that? Here, I got to see that. See that? Can you see that where he said, makes that list? Look at that. See that? What do we have there? Egypt? Maya, the Mayan Indians, I, Ma, Mohenjo Dara, Babylon. Oh, Mr. Ben Benjaminoff, you basically, in this, you basically have fingered the Vatican, even though he did not right do it. Comes to an ominous conclusion. Every one of these civilizations died when people rejected religion and God and tried to create social justice along the socialist principles. Thus, socialism, according to Shafarevich, may be a manifestation of an inborn human instinct of self-destruction, if, if unrestrained, leading ultimately to physical death of all mankind. There it is. The physical death of all mankind. Which is going to, not all of mankind, because there's going to be remnants, of course. But, um, yeah. Dear friend. Dear friend. Listen to me. you got to be aware of these things. Okay. Myself and other brethren can only warn you, but if you're not going to take these things seriously. Now, what can you do about this? Number one, distance yourself from media. Because of what the Lord has called me to, I am on media, but I... I moderation, you know, because I've had times where I've spent 
many hours just looking at stupid stuff. And the Lord's like, Brad. Like, oh. Even my wife's like, Brad. Like, yeah, you're right. Put it away. Put it away. Okay. And realize and recognize. Isn't it interesting? If you look at these news things, they're all basically saying that, like if you check out Fox News, ABC, and NBC, they say it in a different way, but they're all running off of the same script. Why? Because as we have already heard, it comes from Rome. Rome is the mega power today. Rome controls America. Rome is in control of Russia and China. China is a communist country. China, communism, the Vatican, hello? The inevitability is the time in the time of Jacob's trouble, all of this is going to reach ahead in that man of sin, the son of perdition. But the ultimate end of that is what? The destruction of it. And the coming in of the kingdom of heaven. Turning your authorized version of the scriptures to Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4, I believe it is. Proverbs, one second, please. Proverbs chapter 4. Verses 5 on to verse 13. Get wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Get understanding, departing from evil. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, her wisdom, compared in scripture to a beautiful woman. For we can grasp how important and how excellent is the fear of the Lord. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. What is that? Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. The fear of the Lord is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Exalt her, the fear of the Lord, wisdom. Again, compare it unto a beautiful woman, so we can grasp it, how precious it is to fear the Lord. Okay, Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall, steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her. For she is thy life. And see, again, here in Proverbs 4, wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, is compared unto a beautiful woman, feminine, beauty, gorgeous, to let us know how precious the fear of the Lord is in the sight of God. And ultimately, Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 on to verse 11. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Which, having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. You're loved to sleep by the media, huh? Get your coffee and donuts and your fast food and your Hollywood movie and your pacified. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yes, a little sleep. A little slumber. A little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth. Thy want is an armed man. They live, the Jesuits. Well, most of you sleep at the uh, at what the Vatican has put before your eyes and that that mist that they've lulled you to sleep. Now is the time to wake up.
wake up out of your sleep. This this train wreck of mankind is inevitably doomed for the time of Jacob's trouble. But today, you don't have to be on that train wreck. The Titanic is sinking, going down. The, the, the front of her has already plummeted to the bottom of the ocean. The rear end is up, riding itself with the air still trapped in it. But that air is escaping until it plummets uh, underneath the waves to the bottom of the sea. You don't have to be on the Titanic when she sinks, boy. Come. Let us reason together, you and I. Thank you for watching this if you do. I'll see you in the next video.